Algebra 2, 1.4b, the distributive property and factoring. We can use the distributive property to factor expressions, and factoring is the reverse of multiplying. When we factor an expression, we find an equivalent expression that's a product. So when we have 2x plus 4y plus 8z, this is a term, this is a term, and this is a term. And each term of the expression is separated by a plus or a minus sign an addition or subtraction sign only, not multiplication or division, just addition or subtraction, okay? That's what separates the terms. This 2 is a coefficient, that x is a variable, it's a letter of the alphabet taking the place of an unknown amount, but they're both factors. Both 2 and x are factors, okay? 4 and y are factors, 8 and z are factors. The 4 is a coefficient to the y, the 8 is a coefficient to the z, see? If all the terms of an expression have a factor in common, we can factor it out by using the distributive property. We usually factor out the greatest common factor of all the terms. So for a times x minus a times y, because both terms have an a, we can factor it out. That's the greatest common factor. So we end up with a times x minus y. For 9x plus 27y, we can factor out the 9, because that's the greatest common factor, because 9 times 3 is 27, and we end up with 9 times x plus 3y. We factored out that 9. And here's the uh, principal rate and time. And if the principal plus the principal rate and time then we can factor out this p for principal as p times 1 plus the prt, principal times rate times time, and it ends up becoming p times 1 plus rt, 1 plus the rate times the time. See? That's factoring a formula. If we have 6x plus 6y, they both have the 6 in common, so we can factor the 6 out as the greatest common factor and just do 6 times x plus y. For 18x plus 21y, the 18 and the 21 both have a 3 in common. That's the greatest common factor, the GCF. And we can do 3 times 6x plus 3 times 7y. And because they have the 3 in common, we can make it 3 times 6x plus 7y. we got a couple more. If we have x plus 3xy, that x is in common in both terms, isn't it? That would be the greatest common factor for both terms. So that would be like x times 1 plus 3xy, and that would give us x times 1 plus 3y. If we have 5x minus 10, the greatest common factor is a 5. 5 can go into both of these. That would give us 5 times x minus 2. See, if we use the distributive property, it would get us back to 5x minus 10. For negative 25a plus 15b plus 5, the greatest common factor for these three terms is a 5. We can factor it out. And that gives us 5 times negative 5a, that makes the negative 25a, plus 3b, that makes the 15b, plus 1, that makes the 5. See? And if we use the distributive property, it would get us right back to this equation, that expression, okay? So factoring is just the opposite of distributing. And to factor, you just rewrite the sums and terms as a product. Factoring out a common factor can help us solve equations and combine fractions. We're going to go deeper into factoring in Chapter 5. We're going to discuss the difference of two perfect squares and two perfect cubes. And you learned about uh, the difference of squares in Algebra 1, but we're going to go a little deeper, okay? And that's going to be in Chapter 5. We're only in Chapter 1 now. So our next video is 1.4c. We're going to talk about collecting like terms using the properties, commutative, associative, etc. And if you want to go to any of the previous videos for Chapter 1, just click on the description of this video, and you're going to find the previous ones, similar ones, helpful ones on this topic that I feel might be useful, okay? So, 
All right, let's talk about collecting like terms, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.